Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the City of Independence, I welcome each of you in attendance, as well as those of you who are watching this meeting on City 7, to the May 14th meeting of the Independence Planning Commission. Before I begin our meeting, let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. For those of you who are unfamiliar with our meetings, it is a responsibility of this commission to hold public hearings and make recommendations to the Independent City Council on matters relating to zoning and land use changes within our city. We also consider and make decisions on plats, special use permits, and other issues, as well as changes in codes and policies that relate to city planning. Our procedure for each case tonight will be as follows. First, the applicant will be recognized to speak on behalf of their case, followed by anyone else that wishes to speak in favor of that matter. Secondly, those who are in opposition or who have questions regarding the case will then be recognized to speak. Then if there was opposition or questions from the public, the applicant will be allowed a rebuttal period or an answer period to address those concerns or questions and once the applicant is finished, the chair will declare the public hearing portion of that case closed and further comment from the public will not be recognized. At that point, the commissioners will have the opportunity to discuss the case with one another and during that discussion, the commission reserves the right to ask questions of all parties concerned. And then finally, we will render a decision in the case. Because this is the only public hearing of the cases on the agenda tonight, all those who wish to speak will be heard. All comments and questions from the public should be addressed to the chair and not directly to the applicant or directly to the staff. The chair also requests that statements be kept brief and on point and that if a statement has been previously made by a previous speaker, please do not repeat it but if you wish, please just stand and indicate your agreement on the matter as well. Now, to expedite tonight's meeting, the chair asks that everyone who wishes to testify or who thinks that they may wish to testify during our discussion, please stand now and be sworn in. Those standing, Please raise your right hand. Yeah, if you think you might, you might as well just go ahead and do it. There's no penalty involved. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, please answer, I do. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Okay, the first item on our agenda is first decide to decide if we're going to follow the suggested um, agenda from Stewart. Mr. Did, Chair? Yes, sir. In the matter of uh, modifying the agenda for today, I propose the first two cases listed are, are the same, then the short-term rental is moved up to third, then the th three items for Cogan Lane should be heard or slash discussed together, but voted on separately, and then the final case uh, of the changes to the ch city code be considered last. Okay. Do I have a second on that? I second. Okay. Uh, Stuart, before we take the vote, because my email doesn't want to pull up, <laughs> could you tell us again the order? Like, you know, five is going to one or Okay, so uh, number one and number two are the same. And then number three would be the short-term rental would move up into to follow the rezoning for 23rd Street. And then number four, the three cases on Cogan Lane, which are all related, 
And then the last one would be the uh, UDO amendment. Okay, so three goes to five, and then four and five move up? That's right. All right. So if you're following along on your bulletin or your agenda, whatever you want to call it, one in, it's going to go one, two, four, five, three. Because we're going to be nice to you folks because I don't know that you want to sit through our discussion of a UDO amendment. <laughs> okay, so the first item we have is a consent agenda for number case number 19-320-02, final plat, Ansley Apartments, first plat. Yeah, motion. Um, is there a motion to approve, approve this consent agenda? I move to approve that we approve the consent agenda. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Okay, we're ready for the vote. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Uh, let's see who's here. Commissioner. McLean? Yes. And Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes. The consent agenda is. What about me? What oh. about me? Oh, Wiley. <laughs> 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 and, 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 Commis and Commissioner Wiley. <laughs> yeah, yes. Present. <laughs> Hashtag me too. Um, okay, well, it, it passed. So, so the next case on our agenda is case number 19-100-04, rezoning of 106 East 23rd Street. Yeah, if the commission can remember at its last meeting on April 23rd, it voted to continue this case to this meeting in order the applicant meet, could meet with city staff to discuss issues relating to whether the proposed zoning classification for the site should be either C2 or C3. Uh, staff did meet with the applicant and at the meeting uh, the zoning district options were discussed and the land uses and activities permitted in each district was also discussed. Some of the primary issues included no outdoor storage of vehicles and or equipment including hauling trailers, mowing equipment and related to business, related business equipment. The equipment must be kept inside the building or stored off site. However, the standard pickup trucks three-quarter ton or less may be parked or stored outside or inside the property and uh, <coughs> during the discussions he indicated that he would be working to put the trailers and the equipment inside the building he also talked about potentially building another building or just cutting additional garage doors in that long wall that's on that side I can uh, show you I didn't bring up the uh, thing but here I can uh, Okay, as you see, the uh, uh, that's the front, and this is the, the side. You can see the side along there behind the fence line that he would be cutting holes in the wall potentially to put more trailers in the building, or he could work with the existing garage door that goes into the building. And then the second was any areas of the property where vehicles were parked, stored, or used for, any, or used for a driving surface must be paved. This would include any area behind the fence which needs to be at least partially paved. He is aware of that. And then the storage of gravel, wood chips, mulch, decorative stone, and rela related material can be kept behind the fenced areas. He does have out along the road a little display area. But uh, these are mostly for materials that he doesn't use on the site when he's there, just like leftovers and things. He indicated that he doesn't really have people that come there as such you know they don't come there to buy mm. a wheelbarrow of wood chips or whatever that's just something that he takes to the site and I, I think that uh, after our discussion the applicant indicated he had better understanding of the restrictions of each zoning district and indicated that he could meet the C2 standards and is comfortable with that in lieu of the C3 zoning classification and staff does recommend approval of the C2 zoning and he is here to answer any questions if uh, if you wanted him to or to make another presentation if you'd like. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Raleigh, could you please come forward? Uh, 
I think unless one of the commissioners wants to disagree with me, we understand what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And I just want to hear you publicly say, for the record, that you understand that this is going to be C2 and that you're okay with that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Does anyone else have questions of Mr. Ariola? All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else here in the, uh, that wishes to speak in favor of this case? Okay. Is there anyone else here who has questions or is opposed? All right. Seeing no movement in the crowd, we will declare the public hearing portion of this case is closed and we'll entertain questions or a motion. Mr. Chair? Yes. In the matter of case number 19-100-04 rezoning at 1026 East 23rd Street from R12 to Family Residential to C2 General Commercial be approved. Okay, do I have a second? I second. Okay. <coughs> Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes. Uh, this case would move to the City Council? That's right, in about three weeks. Okay. I'll, I'll get with the applicant to make sure he knows when that is. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir, and good luck to you. Okay, our next case is case number 19-100-05, rezoning of 15804 East Cogan Lane and a portion of 15801 and 15803 U.S. 24 Highway. Well, okay. Sorry, I misunderstood you. Okay, so let me correct myself. That's case number 19-400-02, short-term rental at 210 North Union Street. The city give their report, please. <coughs> Amanda Tilton intends to operate a short-term rental from a recently renovated home at 210 North Union Street. The case, the city's first short-term rental application, had actually been scheduled for our April 23rd Planning Commission meeting, but due to a notification error by city staff, um, it's being heard today. So we're beginning with the first um, um, slide here. It's a vicinity map um, showing uh, the location on Union between uh, Maple and uh, Truman Road. The property is zoned R6 single family residential. Uh, surrounding properties are zoned R6 single family residential to the north and the west. They're zoned um, R30 PUD moderate density residential planned unit development to the northeast and uh, C2 general commercial uh, areas to the south and southeast. This is the uh, vicinity map uh, aerial photo. Um, notice north and to the uh, west property, mostly single family homes. You've got uh, rental units up to the northeast. Uh, you've got a legal non-conforming, uh, a single family home that's in a commercially zoned area to the uh, east there. And then a, um, uh, an insurance agency lying directly to the, to the south. The house is a 1,700 square foot residence with uh, three bedrooms, uh, one bathroom, two living spaces, and uh, kitchen dining. Uh, the applicant will be able to accommodate eight guests in three bedrooms and a sofa bed. Uh, note in your packet the pictures provided by the applicant of, of the interior there in the different rooms. There will be two parking spaces on the site off the alley 
to the where the garage is there behind uh, the the house. Um, in addition, uh, as allowed by the UDO, you got two spaces on the street, as well as um, 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 the uh, additional parking that will be allowed uh, by the insurance agents on agency on their parking lot to the south. This drawing shows the notification area uh, within 185 feet of the property that received uh, notification in the mail. Whoop, come here. Here we go. Okay. Um, so real quickly, I'll go within through the um, pictures here. This is looking directly west across Union at the property. You can see the insurance agency to the south. This is the alley that borders on the north side of the house. Uh, this is uh, to the northeast. Uh, you can see the multifamily there. And this is the, um, the home that's on the uh, commercially zoned lot. It's a large historic home. Uh, this is looking south down Union at uh, the old school there on Maple. And uh, looking southwest at the uh, insurance company office. Staff recommends approval of the short-term rental subject to the following uh, conditions. Uh, the short-term rentals shall obtain a business license in accordance with the city code and comply with Article 3, Chapter 5 of the city code. The occupation license number shall be listed on all advertisements and, and online platforms. Number two, the short-term rentals shall secure a refuge collection from a collector who is a license, a license to operate in the city of Independence. And um, three, the short-term rentals shall provide the safety requirements outlined in section 14, uh, 420 of the code. And if you have any additional questions, I'm ready to take those. I have one. Um, there's no uh, analysis attached to this project. <coughs> that I can see, you know what I mean? What do you mean analysis? Analysis, the regular questions that are asked about the yeah, impact. Yeah, that's, that's no, I, basically we use the format of a, a staff report that we did for the home business because it's, it's, it, it's like a home business but it's not, um, but it's not, It's not a rezoning of the property, so there's no analysis that relates to that, nor is it a plat. So it, it's, it is essentially a home business, and we have not provided analysis because there's none in the zoning ordinance that discusses this issue, to list this issue. Help me with my, get my brain wrapped around this. This is, this property, is not the residence no. of the property owner. If it was a standard home business and they were doing something like this, it'd be a bed and breakfast, essentially. Right. That's not what this is. This is a different application, although it's a, it's a variation of, of a home business. So redefine what a short-term rental is. <laughs> In the code, what's a short-term rental? conditions in the code that I was about ready to read, you know, break it out as two different kinds of things, but it's 
covered under the same section. A short-term rental. This is the definition in the code. A single family or two family dwelling unit managed by the property owner or a man property management company for short term lodging. A short term rental shall contain four or fewer guest rooms for uh, occupancy to 10 or fewer, fewer total occupants with no more than two adults per bedroom in which meals shall not be provided to guests. The dwelling unit in a short-term rental shall be rented in its entirety and shall not be, let's see, shall be rented in its entirety and individual rooms shall not be rented to separate parties during the same period of time. For the purposes of this term, a guest is a person who rents a room in a sh short-term rental establishment from no more than 30 consecutive days. So do I understand if, if we put that in other language that there's, <laughs> there's not, I believe you said there was eight rooms? Yes. Okay. Or no, eight, they could have eight guests. They have three rooms. Eight guests. They have three bedrooms and then they have a sofa sleeper okay. in a living space that can sleep two people. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. So, in in this, this is not three separate rentals. This is one rental. With, yes. With up to eight guests in it. That's correct. Okay. And the current zoning of this property is R six single family residential. R six single family residential. Is this equivalent to what Airbnb does? That's the idea. It's substantially, whether that's, that's a platform used or not? Yeah, right. Okay. <coughs> um, my only other question before we hear from the applicant, at least my only other question, is uh, parking. Is there a driveway? Well, I... I I mentioned there's parking? two off-street parking places in that garage that's off the alley. They can, they have two spaces available to them on the street, and then the the parking lot of the property to the south is being made available okay. to them for additional parking if need be. All right, thank you. Does anyone else have questions of staff before we? How does this end that the property owner is not a resident? And traditionally, at least in my brain, these type platforms are used where the property owner is resident. And in this case, the property owner is not in residence, but it is solely occupied by tenants short term. For air and B&Bs, that's not necessarily true. Sometimes they just renovate and do but isn't short that, term. Okay. And we so can the, do that. The, the code we can do that in residential zoning yeah. and so not the commercial. The code isn't making the distinction among between the platforms. It's making the distinction between a home business bed and breakfast right. and a short term rental, which is a different animal. So they're not applying for a home-based business. This was the email I sent th this week. It's th those are the license they're applying for is essentially not a home-based business license. It's different we, because they don't live. We, right. We've had conflating terminology, <laughs> but it's it the way the co this is a carve out in the code, right? That's specifically allowed in in residential areas that doesn't necessarily have the resident living. Got it. Okay. Okay, well let's have the applicant come forward, please. And make sure you state your name and address for the record. Uh, afternoon, my name is Trevor Tilton and we are at 210 North Union. Um, that is the property at question. Yeah, okay. Do you, in, just aside, do you intend to 
Will you still be residing in Independence or close by? Um, <coughs> sorry, folks. <laughs> Uh, no, we actually live in Odessa. Uh, we do reside. We're staying there at the Airbnb tonight. Um, you know, it's been less frequent that we stay here. We usually will stay here two to three nights a week because um, my it's actually my insurance office. Huh. Um, and my wife and I, Amanda, own Square One Homes together. And this is in the business of Square One Homes. Um, but it's been rented out so often now that we don't only stay up here every now and again okay so so you've been using it as this and and you're just trying to comply with the code is that okay so we started this project and we were made aware that there was a brand new ordinance that the city started when we were basically done and had it um, listed now we were the first ones to comply there's over current there's currently over 1,000 operating Airbnbs in Independence right now we are the first ones that are making the switch to uh, become legal we uh, are making the uh, an effort to do so um, it's been kind of hard uh, because you know it's brand new so city staff and it, I tried, I've been going down this road a long time. Uh, as soon as I found out about it, I went in there and you know, it, we didn't figure it out that day, but I did come back and we've got it figured out now, I guess. And then, like I said, the mailing issue, they didn't get it mailed out to make the first date, but uh, we have this date now. So that's, and we have, we've continued to rent out, yes, to answer your question. Okay. Well, we appreciate you trying to comply with the code. Um, is there any uh, is there anything else you think we should know? Um, yes, um, this has been kind of a uh, when I bought the house or when we bought the house, um, it was an eyesore. It we bought it for the sole purpose that it was behind my office, and I hated looking at it. Um, my friends told me that we were crazy and that we should have torn it down. There was um, homeless living in the basement. Uh, we saw all sorts of unspeakable things at this house. So we bought it and we spent all the money <laughs> fixing it up. We've invested over $70,000 in renovation just in this house. Um, we were entertaining the idea of using it as my wife's real estate office, but it just didn't make sense, and I didn't want to rent it out um, to anyone on a year lease because I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and so we wanted to have the option to stay here, and we thought what a great way to um, benefit the square. You know, I'm involved in the square association and trying to bring tourists here to the square and we have had guests from the east coast we've had guests from the west coast um, just about everywhere we've so far we've had 13 stays and i think we started march march 14th was our uh, our first stay and we are booked out for four months i mean we mm -hmm. and we have uh, booklets made inside that uh, send our guests to all the Truman sites, all the square businesses, all the Inglewood businesses. Um, we are, we like to think that we are really helping with tourism dollars and really giving the city a good image. Um, we have had no complaints and we are qualified for a uh, uh, Airbnb super host. Mm. Okay. So uh, we're very happy with the way things have been going, and uh, we're very excited to hopefully be the first legitimate Airbnb in Independence. So, I uh, thank you. Well, thank you. Does anyone have questions of the applicant? Maybe if you could just go over the, your parking again. Sure. So we hear it from you and not the Okay. City. We have parking um, in the back, toward, in that detached garage there. We have parking there, but most of the people park in my parking lot, which adjoins the park, and we will ha we are getting separate signs made that say reserved for guests of the Uptown House. Um, 
that there's plenty of parking for them there, and then they have the on-street parking as well. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other questions, you may be seated. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak in favor of this case? Is there anyone else who is opposed or who has questions? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cl close the public portion of this case. And Mr. Chair? Yes. Before making a motion to approve this operation, I, I simply applaud this blessing to the city and what it does for not only the city, but for the property owners where the opportunity to have this inflow of capital and where properties are improved, it's a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it certainly invites uh, visitors to the city and give them that personal touch. So with that stated, I, I recommend uh, that in a matter of case number 19-400-02, short-term rental at 210 North Union Street, operated by Square One Homes, LLC, be approved to operate a short-term rental at said location. Mm -hmm. Second. With the stated conditions. You second it with the stated conditions. I second that also. Okay, thank you. All right, unless there's no other discussion, I think we're ready to take the vote. Commissioner Ferguson. Yes. Commissioner Preston. Yes. Commissioner Wiley. Yes. Commissioner McLean. Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh. Yes. Case number 19-400-02, short-term rental at 210 North Union Street has been approved. And uh, good luck to you. Maybe you could start a little class, and since there's a thousand of these in here, on how to do this and make a little right. extra money. So, think about it. We got our own Joanna. And uh, really, we do. Congratulations. Yes, we really appreciate you folks uh, stepping out into the, the wild here and taking this on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So. All right, Stuart. Which one's next? Dan Wilson, Dan Wilson. Okay. And did you suggest that we were going to move those together into one one item? Or on separately, okay. All right, the next case is case number 19-100-05, rezoning of 15804 East Cogan Lane and a portion of 15801 and 15803 East US 24 Highway. And we're also going to discuss together with case number 19-310-02, preliminary plat of Wilson Heights. Where's the concession stand? Yeah. <laughs> Need a beverage. 
Give me, give me one second. I think I. Okay. Did you try turning it off and turning it back on? <laughs> <laughs> This one's all our neighbors. <laughs> it is all yeah. our neighbors. There's two country laws. There's six. There's one in Idaho. Did you? Yeah. Even though you live like the same. Yeah. It's kind of here and there. Yeah. It's a long one. Okay. It's called the Nile. It's called the Southern Nile. I think we'll be okay. Yeah. I think there's just six. Yeah, there's just six. Yeah. Just six. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dan Wilson representing Wilson Homes and Construction Inc. A request to rezone uh, 15804 East Kogan Lane and 15803 East US 24 Highway from R6 single family residential. R18 PUD moderate density residential plan unit development and C2 general commercial to R6 single family residential and C3 service commercial and request preliminary and final appro approval for the same properties. Hmm? Yeah, plat approval. Okay, so if you from your packets, um, basically talking about those two large tracks. You'll notice in your on your revised drawings, um, it does not include that um, auto repair um, like the original um, drawing and staff report did. It's just the two large tracks that uh, that are away from the intersection. Okay, and. Uh, because of that, um, um, there's actually fewer lots. There's going to be um, eight instead of ten. Okay, the one that was um, a flag lot that was going to have Kogan access, um, the one commercial lot, um, no longer has that access, and it was combined with the lot to the north. So there's one large commercial lot and seven residential lots, okay? So uh, just um, speaking about the area, um, um, this is surrounded by a lot of uh, C2 general commercial zoning along the corridor to the north as well as to the uh, west. Um, of course, the auto repair uh, location on the corner of Kogan and US 24 um, is zone C2 as well. And then you have um, R6 with the existing residences that lie south of um, Kogan Lane across the street from the proposed development as well as um, um, R6 on the north side of Kogan farther down to the east. Um, in the vicinity, of course, you have a retail uh, hardware store to the north. Um, you have, again, you have to the east and south single family homes. Um, uh, to the west, it's a mix of 
different commercial uses, uh, uh, auto repair, animal groomer, uh, used car sales, um, and as well as some residences that are zoned C2 as everything along that corridor, 24 highway corridor um, generally is. Uh, the applicant intends to rezone and replat uh, the two tracts of land into an eight lot subdivision consisting of a commercial lot and then the seven residential lots. Again, lot eight will be that vacant north lot and the northwestern portion of the tract behind the um, uh, auto repair um, store that presently has a gutted house on the property uh, that um, would be removed eventually. Um, the applicant requests that that lot be zoned C3 to permit outdoor storage of vehicles and equipment. Uh, the, the remainder of the lots would be down zoned uh, to um, R6 and uh, the six of them are approximately uh, 10,350 square feet. Uh, the number seven on the east that wraps around uh, to the north side behind the other residential lots frontages would be 42,640 uh, feet. Again, all of these uh, properties would have driveways and frontages to Kogan Lane. Uh, the area of rezoning abuts uh, two rights of ways um, and platting abuts two rights of ways the US 24 highway corridor and Kogan Lane um, of course uh, 24 highway is a MoDOT highway and currently already has a sidewalk on it um, public works is going to require half street improvements and sidewalks along the north side of Kogan, the Kogan Lane right of way. Um, the commercial property is responsible for its own on site detention. However, the residential lots uh, will uh, drain to uh, much of their detention or runoff anyway, will drain to a detention basin located on lot seven. Uh, this will require an e uh, easement. Uh, with a notation on the plat that the owner of lot seven will be required to maintain that basin. Um, I would go through our video tour, but I can't picture tour the neighborhood, but I can't do that for you. So I'll go straight uh, to our recommendation. Uh, staff recommends approval of the rezoning uh, portion of this application. We also recommend approval of both the preliminary and final plats with the following conditions. Um, on both the preliminary and the final plat, we need a condition that states, uh, show the proposed East Kogan Lane and East uh, US 24 uh, and the existing US 24 sidewalks on the plat. Um, and then just for the final plat, we need to include that uh, recommendation as well as a, um, a house cleaning issue of cleaning up the uh, approval language uh, for a, uh, approval of a final plat approved by the City Council and the Mayor of the City of Independence Missouri on this blank day of blank year and then uh, the last item uh, create a drainage easement uh, for the drainage basement with a notation on the final plat at the th that the owner of uh, lot seven will maintain that basin. And that basin is to serve all these properties or the ones to the north or? All the residential, although uh, a good portion of talking to uh, Public Works this afternoon. A good portion, particularly stuff on the driveway and whatnot, may actually end up in the street gutter as well. So, but particularly the lots on the end will, will drain to lot seven. Okay. Is 
Anyone have questions of staff before we call the applicant forward? That okay. basin is in lot seven? Yes. Did you recommend a spot like the well, public the, works the, recommend? The, the a preliminary spot? plat shows the spot. It's actually on the preliminary plat. Not that it's a big deal, but it shows it in what is now lot eight. Not lot seven, but you're saying it's well, there. Well, on the, the, on lot the, seven on the revised drawing, it should say that should be lot seven. And the revised drawing is on the, the east final plat. Oh, final. Yeah, the the revised are the ones that I yeah. left on your on the dais for today. I got this one, replat B, and final plat. Right. So it's on replat B, right? Which what shows it right here. No, well, that's the one on the commercial lot. There's another one the, down by Kogan. The, on the, the frontage of lot seven. Oh, down in the uh, south. It's on the, the it's on the preliminary of the frontage of lot seven. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the access to Kogan Road will be between that storm basin and the uh, and the property lot line. six and th they would build the house back behind the property there is it the access is going to be between the existing lot or the future lot six which side of the basin is it going to be on east or west Do you want to look at my basin is thing? <laughs> to the east, isn't it? Well, Thank you. You were preliminary at the plot, Mr. Yeah, Chair. Chair. I, I guess I'm not understanding what you're asking. I think he was talking about the location of that basin, which is seemed to be in it's the southwest yeah, corner of it's it's at southwest corner it says future storm southeast water corner management rather. system or basin okay. at the southwest corner of the replat and my question was southeast i mean there's going to be there's going to be street access to kogan road for the house mm -hmm. and my question was what side of the basin is it going to be on on the left side that's uh, this is a 65 foot wide lot Okay, so so the, so the a west driveway a driveway is what twelve feet. The west the west side. Yeah, okay. on the west side. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, Mr. Wilson, could you come forward or? And of course, give us your name and address for the record, please. Chair, members, Dan Wilson, thirteen twenty Lee Summit Road, Independence, Missouri. We own, uh, started this new company, Wilson Homes, me and my wife. And um, I've got quite a bit of history with this piece of property. I lived um, across the street from this 40 years ago. So this property, I know quite a bit about it. Um, this property has been vacant for the 40 some years that I know. Nothing has been on. I think the Moonlight Motel was the last thing. Okay. And um, it's the same growed up, the same trees, the same mess that it's been for the 40 years that I've known it. So we're just um, ready to help the community and ourselves out with this thing and um, get some new buildings put on there, some new houses, and uh, just get this thing cleaned up and try to get rid of some of the problems that are there. The old house um, has been vacant for some time and it's had everything in it. Yeah. It's, we've had to run a lot of things out of there. And we're trying to get the uh, trees, the brush cleaned up everything right now. And I guess um, I can just start out with this. Let me just start with the commercial property. We're going to um, be building approximately a 20,000 square foot building on 24 highway. It is going to be con 
three units will be rental and it is going to be in the automobile industry service area and they're going to be um, several overhead doors it's going to be a nice building similar to buildings that you've seen we've built on 24 highway um I guess we're going to go into there. We're going to be putting in the, the water detention, the storm sewers, the or not storm sewers, the water detention, the um, curb and gutter on 24 Highway, new sidewalk throughout. Of course, we'll conform to when we get ready for the building. Any landscaping, parking, whatever needs to be done at that point. And we'll move on down, um, I guess, to Kogan, also on the. Um, commercial we're going to have of course a privacy fence between all of commercial and residential with a 12 foot wide buffer on everything of course all the water detention for commercial will be separated from residential and we'll make sure there's berms there that nothing goes that direction and we'll move on down i guess to the commercial that we have or the uh, residential and we're going to remove and demo the old house that's there now. I guess that's actually on part of the commercial, but it's going to be demoed. Then we go on down, and we're going to have, like I said, the seven lots, and we're going to have houses on those that range from 1,600 to 1,900 square foot with full basements, nice homes. And we're going to have, of course, um, half street improvements, which will be new curbs and sidewalks in front of the houses. And, of course, with that, as we're building new landscaping, new trees. And of course, the we've already talked about the water detention is gonna be on lot seven. And the answer to your question on the driveway, I believe it's gonna be on the right side of the detention so as you're pulling into the, into the driveway. I'm gonna be, the drive will be up against the existing property. Okay. I believe is the way we're gonna do it now. Okay, all right. And, um, of course, there again, we're putting on the ownership of title also here of the uh, upkeep on the detention basin for lot seven. And we're doing that so that we don't have to have a homes association on just seven lots. Sure. And I think we can get the thing taken care of better with that homeowner than we can when the home association goes away and nobody takes care of it anymore so okay and I believe that's it for me so this little uh, this little piece of lot eight that's going to back up to lots one two and three that's going to be you want that zone c3 for storage yes okay and I mean hence the fence and the buffer and all that will that storage be uh, since lot eight is going to have what three or four bit separate businesses in that building that you're p putting up not exactly sure how that's going to conform just yet but at least three okay and my intentions are as time goes on here we're going to add some buildings maybe downhill of that another one or so okay so there'll be uh you're going to probably face those those commercial buildings north and south or or are you going to Oriented more towards 24 Highway. Um, we've just tentatively started on that, so it's going to be facing 24 and running lengthways along that property line. Okay. So, and I'm sorry, I just have to ask a quick question of Stuart. So. One C three and one the other one C two. Not it. So it's all C three. It's all C three now because the lots are now one lot and you can't have two zonings on one lot. So his request is for the whole thing to be C three. Okay. Okay. So storage could happen on the entire lot now. Theoretically, it could. Yes. But. If you store something that fronts 24 Highway, do you have to put a fence it would, up Well, it would have to be behind the building, first of all, whatever the structure is. 
Okay. And then it would have to be behind the screen fence. Okay, and the, the fence, what type of fence is it supposed to be? Does it, is it, it would spelled be a out? A solid fence. So, so it, it could, could be, be any type of it solid It could be vinyl, fence. it could be wood, but it would have to be a solid opaque fence. So chain link with no. strips in it? No. No. No chain link. No. Okay, I'm just asking. Right. Um, do you have anything else to add, Mr. Wilson? No, this storage is going to be to the far back of the property. And what that's going to be is anything that's that stays, um, you know, in the commercial. If somebody needs to pull a motor out of a car, you know, and they're waiting for the new one, that goes back behind the screen storage instead of setting out in front of the building like yeah. you see so many in, on 24 Highway right now. Mm -hmm. Try to clean that up. Sure, and that's very much appreciated. Mm -hmm. And just, not that I think you're going to do this, sir, but just for my edification, uh, that couldn't be part of a tow lot then, could it? No. Well, we hope not, because uh, we are full up on tow lots. <laughs> yeah. We have as many, we have a maximum of 10, and I think we have 11. So it could not operate as any tow facility either a tow lot or a tow service. If like, you know, 20, 30 years, I know you're gonna live longer than this, but uh, you know, if something should happen to Mr. Wilson here, does the C3 allow that? If there's like the, the n number falls below the 10 maximum? Well, I believe that there's a special use permit required for it. Okay, so good, thank you. I think. All right, any other questions? We don't questions? need any more tow lots. No. I have a question. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I heard you say how big these houses are going to be. What were the square feet of? The, they're going to range from 1,600 to 1,900 finished on the first floor. Okay. And these lots are 10,350 square feet. So that what leaves about 70 square feet in front? Of each house? There is 70 square uh, feet running feet in front of each lot. And, and so they're long, narrow? Yes, they're going to be nice, long lots. Okay. If you're familiar, I don't know, if you've, you've seen the new houses we're building on Salisbury. Yes. Um, and when you get in the back of those, those are nice, deep lots also. They're really turning out nice. Okay. And it, it makes a nice backyard. Mm -hmm. And these are longer than those. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, do you have anything else you wanna add before? I think I'm good. Okay, well thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Um, is there anyone else here who would like to speak in favor of this case? Okay, is there anyone here who is opposed or who has questions? All right, yes. Just make sure you state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Kim Gruner. I live at 16101 East Kogan Lane. Okay. And I came to learn. Um, okay. I wanted to see the pictures, and I didn't get to see those, so I'd like to see those. Sorry. And I guess <laughs> another question I would have is about um, the, is the city water and sewer, we just got onto that just in the past few years, so how is that affected with what's already been added to that? the place okay we'll find out about that is there anything else that's it okay well, you're probably welcome to look at his screen and okay. yeah. pictures <laughs> thanks <laughs> i don't want to hold up anything that was my well, main you're question fine. You you're fine. that's why, okay. why we're here thanks um so is there city can Stuart answer that or not Stuart. yeah Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, she, her question was about the city sewer and uh, if these are gonna be hooked up to that. Which oh, they, they would have to be. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's not square footage for septic and the, the presence of, of sewer lines require that you hook up to them, so. Okay. All right, that take, okay. Is there anyone else here who has a question? All right, then I'm going to go ahead and close the public portion of this hearing. 
and ask for any comments or motions from my fellow commissioners. motion you're going to have to do three motions three, three motions. votes we got but we'll do them one at a time right mm -hmm. mr chair you would you entertain a motion yes i would entertain a motion in the matter of case number 19-100-05 rezoning at 15804 east kogan lane and a portion of 15801 and 15803 east hill highway be rezoned to R6 single family residential C, well, I should say, what do I do here? From the single family. Da, da, da. If I could just note two, something. Yeah, two R6 single family residential, C2 general commercial, and C3 service commercial. If I could just note something, that portion in the revision was deleted. Mm -hmm. So the partial address is not part of it's the re rezoning. Okay. So modify it. Just C3, no C2. C2. C2 and R6, and that's and it. And R6, not C3. No. Oh. Well, no. C3 and R6, no C2. Oh, okay. <laughs> then the motion is modify it to R6 single family residential and C3 service commercial. I second that. Do you want to pour anything out of it? Sure, it's been motioned and seconded. Let's go ahead and take a vote. Okay. On it. Uh, Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes. Case number 19-100-05, rezoning of all those properties that were mentioned. This has been approved. Now we need to take a second vote, correct? Yes, uh, for, the preliminary, the for the preliminary plat. Okay, so do I have a do I have a motion for case number one nine dash three one zero dash zero two preliminary plat? Mr. Chair. Yes. I move to approve case nineteen dash three two zero dash zero two final plat. That's the wrong one, right? No, that's right. That, no, you, it's this one. It's this one. Sorry, it was the wrong one. <laughs> Mm. Case 19 310 02 preliminary plat for Wilson Heights be approved. Thank you. Do I have a second? Actually, it's not Wilson Heights. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's a Kogan Place replat B. Okay. So noted. That. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was good. I that. second. <laughs> Thank that. you, Heather. That. that. <laughs> Uh, you, you, t you guys have totally conceded and confusing us, but uh, I think we're doing the right thing. So. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Can I Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes. Case number 19-310-02, Polony Pipe for Kogan Place, Replat B, has been approved. Okay. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Have you have one more. We have one more. <laughs> well, I hold those congratulations, please. <laughs> so now we got one nine three two zero zero three final plat. Is this Wilson Heights or does it have a different name? It's it's Kogan Place Replat B. Kogan Place Replat B. Okay. That is not what I have written down here. <laughs> Just so we all know. <laughs> well. Somebody like to move this? And this is the case number we want to hear. It's this one. This one right here. Mr. Chair, I move to approve case number 
320-03, final plat for... Hogan Place. Hogan Place. B. Plan B. Plat. Mm -hmm. Plat B. Replat B. Yes. Be approved. I second. Put us out of our misery and let's have the vote, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Commissioner Ferguson. Yes. Commissioner Preston. Yes. Commissioner Wiley. Yes. Commissioner McLean. Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh. Yes. Case number 19-320-03, final plat. Cogan Place replat B has been approved. Now congratulations are to you, sir, and thank you, and continue the good work that you have been doing, sir. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Good luck. Yeah. When will it be? I mean, what's the timeline? You'll have a good neighbor there to the, <laughs> at the corner there of uh, Kogan and 24. <laughs> Take my word for that. <laughs> R and K. All right. All right. Holy moly. You got congratulations to us for getting that so wrong. Now we're doing we need No, what are we doing? the the uh Marijuana. We need the mar we need the marijuana. We yeah. need that one. Where is that one? There it is. So we're not doing this one? Thank you. Thank you. We've already done it. Wait. Yeah, it was the one we just had. That was the first one we did. Mr. Chair, will will the presenter stipulate uh, his background <laughs> <laughs> and any collegiate <laughs> activities that would support his presentation? How much research have you done? That's <laughs> There are just jokes abound. Okay. Are we ready? Yes, we're okay. ready. I just wanted to make sure I didn't, you know. Uh, John Mayfield, City Manager's Office, former Missouri State Representative, uh, ordained Baptist minister, so here we go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was only fair that I'd be named the medical marijuana, unofficial medical marijuana czar by the city manager. So <laughs> just briefly, I just want to give you a little bit of overview because this is a new industry in the state of Missouri and then kind of go through the uh, proposed amendment, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, November 6, 2018, the voters of Missouri approved Amendment 2 to Article 16 of the Missouri Constitution, which legalizes medical marijuana in Missouri. It provided for deadlines for certain actions to, to occur, including putting in place rules that regulate all facets of medical marijuana. Uh, the first deadline is June 4, 2019. Um, as you may know, on February 19th of this year, the Independent City <coughs> Council adopted an administrative delay until August 3rd, 2019, and it was enacted to give staff time to actually research issues related to medical marijuana because this is a new industry in our state as well as our city. And since the beginning of the year, I have chaired a working group of city staff composed of different departments to look at this issue. Uh, some of us have attended different conferences on this topic, including two conferences hosted by the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services and one hosted by the Mid-America Regional Council. Uh, obviously, the UDO did not provide regulations that allow for the sale, cultivation, and distribution of medical marijuana because it was previously illegal. Uh, we need the time to ensure fairness to all potential applicants by halting any new applications or approvals until such time as regulations are in place. Uh, Amendment 2 calls for the state to accept applications for medical marijuana beginning on August 3rd, 2019 through August 17th, 2019. They must make final decisions by December 31st of this year. Uh, the draft rules of the Department of Health and Senior Services require them to give, a, to give them a proposed address of the location of the facility and also, at the very minimum, a map of the location showing that the proposed site meets local zoning requirements. Uh, the amendment states that local governments may enact ordinances or regulations that govern the time, place, and manner of operations of a medical marijuana facility. And it says also that local governments cannot be quote unquote unduly burdensome in their jurisdictions. In order to ensure that we're not being unduly burdensome, staff is bringing forward this UDO amendment this evening to allow potential applicants to find a location that meets our zoning requirements. And just a little more background, background then we'll get into the amendment itself. Under amendment two, there will be 24 medical marijuana dispensaries in each congressional district. There are eight congressional districts, 
and the state of Missouri. So the 5th Congressional, where we are right now, I would get 24, and there would be 192 total dispensaries in the state of Missouri. There will also be 60 licenses for cultivation facilities and 86 licenses for marijuana-infused products, and that is the entire state. That's not per congressional district. Uh, as of April 25th, there had been 69 pre-applications filed with the Department of Health and Senior Services, which basically means they collected the fee. Uh, they will actually be accepting the, the full applications beginning August 3rd. For this independent no, 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 no. 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 So they're accepting applications. They're accepting checks from everybody. <laughs> they're not discriminating. <laughs> it's, it's a lot to take in. Yeah. So if, I, if it's unclear, anything's unclear, please let me know. So what we have before you tonight are we are defining um, the different medical uh, entities, medical marijuana cultivation facility, medical marijuana dispensary facility, a medical marijuana facility, medical marijuana infused products, manufacturing facility, and medical marijuana testing facility to section 14-201. And these definitions are all based on the state guidelines. Uh, the other changes including, uh, include updating the office, commercial, and industrial use tables to include the medical marijuana uses. The medical marijuana dispensaries are a retail outlet, and as such, those uses would be allowed in the C2 and C3 districts where other retail uses are allowed. Uh, medical marijuana testing facilities are similar to office type uses, and as such would be allowed in the C2, C3, BP, and I1 districts where other office uses would be allowed. And then finally, the medical marijuana cultivation facility and infused products manufacturing are similar to a manufacturing type use and as such would be allowed in the C3 and I1 districts. And then the last change includes adding a new section 14-421, which outlines the various conditions to be met for medical marijuana facilities. Uh, one of the highlights of that is what the amendment calls for, uh, no medical marijuana business located within a thousand feet of an existing elementary or secondary school, licensed child day daycare center or religious assembly. And it talks about how the thousand feet will be measured because that was a hot topic among planners and among people at the different meetings I went to. Uh, also, uh, hours of operation, uh, we have it down here that no sales or distribution of marijuana shall occur upon the premises or by delivery from the premises between the hours of 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. So they have to be open between 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. basically. Um, this is kind of it in a nutshell. Staff recommends approval of the adoption of the proposed amendment number 38 to the Unified Development Ordinance. I should say I'm pinch hitting for Tom Skinnell, Community Development Director. Uh, he was not able to be here th tonight, so he sort of deputized me. He thought I had enough credentials to present this to this august body. So, uh, and then there's also a proposed, uh, there's a map also in your packet that shows where under this amendment where the di different medical marijuana facilities could be located because they are more than a thousand feet, a thousand feet or more within those entities I described before. So I think that concludes my remarks. I'd be happy to take any questions I can answer or what you'd like to do at this point. I can see I really kept this audience here tonight. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question. Uh -huh. um, how did they make this map up? Is it based on uh, it is previous they, applicant? Pre no, what that map shows is the, the places that are within a thousand feet of a church daycare or uh, based on the different zoning that we have proposed. Okay. And Mr. Skinnell made up that map, so I can't speak too much more to it than that, but that's my understanding of the map. Okay. Does the UDO specify how many independents is going to have? That is all regulated by the state. The only thing that the city is allowed to do is regulate the time, place, and manner of operation. All other decisions are made by the Department of Health and Senior Services. Okay. It is very possible we may get no medical marijuana facilities. Um, define a normal sense of smell. I would have to defer to someone on what normal sense of smell means. I'm not sure I know what you're... There is ventilation required. It mm -hmm. says no odor shall be detectable by a person with a normal sense of you. smell. Mm -hmm. So if someone reports it, are they uh, automatically labeled as an abnormal smeller? Well, I, I thank you for that question, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know that that came up at our meeting at Mark in January because marijuana does have a distinct odor for those who are familiar with it. I have no personal knowledge of that, but I've been told that it has a distinct odor. 
Uh, there have been, it's my understanding, there have actually been court cases in Colorado when like renters in an enclosed, like an apartment facility and one says, oh my goodness, this is horrid. And I, not being an attorney, I can't recall what the decision that case was, but that's my knowledge of the odor issue. Okay. Well. But there's no order in, odor in producing it, right? I mean, in your putting it in bags or <laughs> whatever they do. <laughs> You're asking a Baptist minister. <laughs> <laughs> he has no knowledge He's of this whatsoever. Asking a general whatsoever. room of people who know nothing about this. I'm not answering this question. Uh, we're all on TV, so I don't think we're going to get an answer to that question. But I understand that. Uh, the ventilation means it's venting it out into the atmosphere. So I just, I, I don't know, it's kind of tongue in cheek really ask that question. I mean, I, I don't know if there's carbon filters required or, you know, activated charcoal or something like that. To I think the chair is, is leading the presenter. Yeah. <laughs> We're Thank ready you, God to bless you, Mr. Commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Billy, this is a this is a landmark thing right here. It's going to change the character, <laughs> if not the disposition, of independence. So, I'm just I was just asking. I I really I guess my my to get sort of serious for a second. I guess my question again: Could you state again? Not that I anticipate that we're going to have any issues, but if we do, that it's a state issue mostly so the city has very limited things that they could or couldn't do unless the, this place is actually breaking the law correct um, again that would probably be a, a legal question but I can just speak generally to that it is mostly a state issue they will give guidance to local police departments under amendment two to sort of assist them because I think they understand um, this is a new industry and there's gonna be kind of a bumps along the way as we go along we kind of learn this all together sure. um, having talked to some attorneys I think there will probably be some minor tweaks to our ordinances but they will be more along the lines of conforming with what's in amendment two and what are in the draft rules from the Department of Health and seniors they're they're allowed to do the inspections we cannot inspect any facility I mean it is this amendment was drafted by folks who drafted the amendment or the medical marijuana initiatives in Colorado and Oregon and they've been through court challenges so they were very smart and new and also some folks are politically astute here in Missouri drafted this and we're behind this so I would say it's it's, it's really a 99% state issue to be honest with you Mr. Chairman I mean we, we do have local ordinances that may speak to this or we may be allowed to tweak them um, like driving under the influence for example mm -hmm. I mean we can do things of that nature, add that to the, and that may be more of a, again, more of a state issue, but we may be able to take care of some local issues ourselves. Yeah, but I know that we'll be in constant contact with Department of Health and Senior Services. I know Police Chief Halsey has been in contact with local jurisdictions, including North Kansas City, who we modeled this amendment after tonight, and he's been in touch with his uh, fellow law enforcement folks, and they've had DHSS come in and meet with their meetings. So I think Chief Halsey is pretty on top of this and you know, we'll do the best we can what we have to deal with. And so they'd have to apply for business licenses just like any other business? That's under what we've proposed, yes. Okay. But they'd have to be licensed by the state first. Sure, okay. Any other questions? Can the city then limit the business licenses? To the city like they do some other things well I think the Department of Health and Senior Services will do that for us to be quite honest with you because if you don't have a state license it doesn't really matter right. and there's only going to be 24 per congressional district and I can tell you that city of Kansas City Missouri is on the record they're one of their assistant city managers has said they're going to be very aggressive in pursuing medical marijuana dispensaries in particular to Kansas City there are only 24 allowed the entire 5th Congressional, and that includes most of Jackson, a little sliver of Clay, and all of Lafayette, Saline, and Ray counties. So I think that DHSS will probably take care of that problem for us more, like, more than likely. Okay. Any other questions, comments? All right. 
Thank you. And this is a public hearing, correct? All right. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak in favor of this UDO amendment? Is there anyone here who has posed or asked questions? Okay, nobody's getting up, so the public hearing portion is closed. Yes, sir, I am. In the matter of case number 19-175-02, Unified Development Apartments, Amendment number 38, Medical Marijuana Facilities, I move that the proposed amendment be adopted. I second. Moved and seconded. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes, case number 19-175-02, Unified Development Ordinance Amendment number 38, Medical Marijuana Facilities has been approved. Does this go to council? Yeah, in about three weeks, okay. something like that. Okay. Uh, the next item on our agenda is approval of minutes of April 23rd, 2019. If anybody has any changes, comments, speak now. Otherwise, these minutes will stand approved as written. Anything we need to know? Anything you want to tell us? I believe our next uh, planning commission meeting is June 11th, if I'm wow. uh, correct. So have a little break here. Okay, great. Thank you. Any items from the commissioners to staff or to us? Okay. We will stand adjourned at 728 p.m.